Hello, and welcome to the Skilled Assessor's Introduction to the Coordinated Entry System. My name is Liza DeShano, and I'm the Coordinated Entry Specialist at the Center for Housing and Health. Here's a list of what we'll be covering in this presentation. Let's get started. The Chicago Coordinated Entry System was rolled out in 2017 in response to a federal mandate that all continuums of care, or COCs, adopt this streamlined approach to prioritizing and distributing resources. The Chicago COC is comprised of more than 100 organizations and individuals who work together to prevent and end homelessness in Chicago. Representatives from each of these agencies work together to support implementation and refinement of CES in Chicago. But why CES? Coordinated entry is a front door approach for people experiencing homelessness to access housing and support. Before CES, the responsibility of finding housing support was largely placed on people experiencing homelessness. With CES, there is one assessment that provides access to housing resources all over the city, so clients are not restricted to resources that are close to their location and they don't have to repeat their story for every single application. Further, CES increases access because referrals are not based on the preferences or contacts a case manager has. In fact, clients don't even have to have a case manager to be assessed for CES. Lastly, people get linked to resources that match their needs instead of just the first resource that's available. CES matches households to a variety of permanent and short-term housing solutions. Here's the CES workflow. The steps that you are responsible for as a skilled assessor are circled in red. I will explain each of these steps in this presentation. First, engage. The first step of CES is engaging the target population. Access points, designated for walk-in CES assessments and updates, are located on each side of the city at locations where people experiencing homelessness visit in high volumes. These are highlighted in red. There are also some shelters, drop-in centers, and outreach teams who have skilled assessors on staff. Here are the locations of the access points. This is also available on the CSH website. The next step of the workflow is assess. But before you assess someone, you need to verify that the person is eligible for CES. Here's why eligibility is so important. First, you don't want to waste your time or the client's time. Second, it's better for the client to find out now rather than later if they're not eligible. For instance, if the client is matched to a housing provider who learns that the person is not literally homeless, they will not move forward with housing the client. Third, while time is being taken for the housing provider to interview that person, determine they are not eligible, and request another match, there is an empty unit that someone else could have had. And lastly, empty, empty units could result in HUD providing less funding next time around because it looks like we don't need the funding. So who's eligible? Adults ages 25 and over who are experiencing literal homelessness and youth ages 18 to 24 who are unstably housed or experiencing literal homelessness are eligible for CES. You can determine who is experiencing literal homelessness and therefore who is eligible for CES by asking, where did you sleep last night? People who slept outside or in a shelter or are fleeing domestic violence are always eligible and can move forward with the CES assessment. So you've determined the client is eligible. The first part of the CES assessment is identification and housing eligibility. It contains yours and the client's contact information, location of the assessment, housing history, income, sheltered status, and length of time homeless. It is important to include detailed, updated contact information so that when the household is matched to a housing intervention, 
we are able to connect with them. The second part of the assessment is the VI, which covers any disability information and the client's trauma history. When you finish the assessment, make sure the client knows to update their assessment regularly. Give them the client brochure with their HMIS number and your contact information. Next in your workflow is triage. If the person is a veteran, a youth, fleeing domestic violence, or needs shelter tonight, attempt to connect them to an immediate resource. These are things that might come up during the assessment. There are almost 9,000 people on Chicago's One List. The One List is populated from HMIS and includes information on all people currently experiencing literal homelessness in Chicago. Over half of those on the One List have been assessed for the coordinated entry system. One List information is always available on the All Chicago dashboard. Catholic Charities gets noti notified about a unit vacancy from a housing provider and then uses the one list to match a household that meets the eligibility criteria for the unit and is the most vulnerable according to our system's prioritization plan. There is a lim limited amount of resources available for housing and so we must dedicate our resources to those who are the most vulnerable. Our community made the decision to prioritize those who have been homeless for the longest amount of time and those who are unsheltered. You can read more about the prioritization plan on the CSH website. The last step in your workflow is the match. When someone you've assessed is matched to housing, you will receive an email from Catholic Charities. When you receive an email like this, you are responsible for reaching out to the client to let them know about the match and give them information to connect with the housing provider. The email will also include the housing provider the client is matched to and the housing system navigator. Housing system navigators can help clients get documents together and make appointments with the housing provider. When you reply to the email, make sure you hit reply all to keep everyone in the loop. Applicants become inactive after 30 days of if their only encounter with the homeless system is the CES housing assessment. These applicants need to update their assessment every 30 days. If households receive services from a homeless provider such as a shelter, outreach, or drop-in center, they will remain active while they are working with the program and do not need to update their assessment unless information changes. If households re-engage, they do not need to start a new assessment. Finally, as a skilled assessor, you are responsible for keeping clients' information private, doing enough assessments to maintain familiarity with the system, completing the assessment fully and accurately, attending at least two trainings per year, as well as the quarterly skilled assessor meeting, and providing high quality care to each client that you encounter. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions, concerns, or feedback in response to this training. Thank you for listening. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Carvlin. I am the System Implementation Specialist at All Chicago, and my focus on the HMIS team is coordinated entry. And so what I'm going to do today is walk you through the assessment in HMIS on how to enter people into coordinated entry. So we're in HMIS as of now. I wanted to point out a couple of things. So first of all, before you even sit down with a client to assess them, you want to make sure they're eligible for coordinated entry. So the other thing you need to know is whether or not the client is willing to share certain information with some housing providers and the matching team in HMIS. And so that has to do with this client consent, which is here on the help desk. It's described in the help desk, and then you can also print out client consents from the help desk. You can download and then have these handy. What you're gonna do with this client consent once they sign is either put it into the client file 
or you can upload it to the client record in HMIS. So the other thing I have open here is the skilled assessor workflow, which can come in handy when you're first starting to do assessments with clients. This is also located on the help desk. You can bookmark this. And then the other thing we need to make sure we get right is this housing history tool. So I've got that window open as well. And we'll get into that more later. So I've already determined the client is eligible. They are homeless. They're over 18. We're going to, and they've, they have agreed to share some of their information in HMIS. So we're ready to assess them. Okay, so the next step is for most skilled assessors, you're going to enter data as. So it's almost like you're switching hats. You no longer work at your agency, you're going to work for the skilled assessor project. So you've got to enter data as this other project. Some of you won't have to enter data as because your only project is the skilled assessor project. For those of you who have that second project, we're going to click here, find the skilled assessor project, and then enter data as there. Now we can look for the client in HMIS, make sure they're not there. We're going to see if this client's available, if this client's record is in the system, and they're not. So we're going to fill out the rest of this information, all of their social security, etc., and make sure to put whether or not the full information was reported. We're going to say no, they're not a, veter a veteran. The other thing I'm going to say here is that if you are part of another project and you're working with another project, you've already done the introductory course for HMIS. If you haven't, this won't be quite as familiar to you. And so I do recommend doing the introductory course even though it's not required for skilled assessors. So I'm going to walk through this quickly because most of you will have already gone through this information and I don't want to repeat. Um, too much. So you're going to add new client with this information. You're always going to pick the middle one, add client and add new household. And then the household type, for HMIS purposes, we're just going to say single female because we're not going to add any of the children. However, when we get into the assessment, we will put female with child because we're going to um, pretend that this is a woman with a child, but we don't have to add the child into the household in, in HMIS. So we'll go ahead and continue. Here's the household window in the client record. This is definitely the head of household and it defaults to self. From here, we're going to save and exit out. And then we want to go over here. Actually, we're going to go to Client Profile. And what we can do here is upload the client consent right under Add New File Attachments. So we'll add new file attachment, choose a file, choose the scanned client consent if that is what you'd like to do. It is optional. It's a way to manage these um, records, especially if you're doing a lot of work in the field and you do not have a paper file to put the client information in, but that client consent needs to be stored somewhere. So you can also put social security cards and other information in this file attachment area. From there, we are gonna add client demographics. So we'll add their date of birth. And just remembering they've got to be minimum 18 years old. Their full DOB was reported. Gender is female. Primary race is black or African American. Secondary race, client refused. And ethnicity is non-Hispanic, non-Latino.
So go ahead and save that information. Whoops, I put the wrong. Birthday, 1991. So client is 28. From here, we can go over to the Entry Exit tab. We don't need to fill out the ROI information for coordinated entry. So you're going to add Entry Exit. It default to, to the Skilled Assessor Project 1474. Choose HUD. And then the project start date is going to typically be the day that it defaults to, which is today, but you may have done the assessment two days ago on paper. Just don't let it go more than two days without putting it into HMIS. If you had the child in HMIS already or a partner, they're going to show up here, but you're only going to ever enter the head of household. So you're never going to click any of the other people when you add them into the project. So we saved and continued. Now we're in the assessment. For some people, skilled assessors who are dedicated and at access points, you will be doing this diversion pre-screener first. And I'm just gonna show that to you, but I'm not gonna walk through that currently. In the future, we're gonna try to default to this diversion pre-screener because we want everybody to complete the diversion pre-screener prior to entering them into the skilled assessor project. For today, we're just gonna go through the assessment and then we're gonna fill out this vulnerability index and disability tab, but the rest don't apply to you at all. So the most important information, we're gonna skip these top two because ideally they're not attempts. You've completed the questioning. You've determined with the client that they wanna complete the assessment the client consent for data sharing is yes, you completed that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in here. And you've got to pick either A or B. We're going to pick B so I can show you how to lock a file. They have chosen to share their information minimally in HMIS, just to relevant housing providers as well as the matching team. And so we definitely, definitely want your information and we need for you to overwrite previous assessor's information. So if you came in here and didn't update and somebody else had assessed this client, we need you to change the previous assessor information and put your own name and contact information so that you're the most recent person that the person, the client had been in touch with and we reach out to you. We need the client name and relationship. We, some of this information fed over from the client profile data. We need for you to determine the client's history with the military to see if they're, they qualify for any of those services. Client contact information is extremely important and we need it to be thoroughly completed and, and as well uh, alternative contact information is important. Here's where we would put household size, so we're going to put two. You've got one adult and one child. The child age is two, and we're going to say it's a little boy. This is what we look at when we match people to housing. So this is looking at the, the household that wants to stay together once they get matched. That's what we're interested in. The household type is going to be a female with child. These are other questions you're going to go through thoroughly, and then you're going to ask these questions of people 18 to 24. Once you do the training um, practice assessment and send that in, I will look at those, but for now you can read them yourself. So what we're trying to do is determine the housing status, so what you've got to do is choose either category one or category four 
for people who are 25 and older because if they were not homeless, we wouldn't be assessing them in the first place. So deter diversion, again, like I said, we're trying to move these questions out of this assessment and have it be something you do prior to completing the assessment. And then we do wanna know though, if there were some alternative options that were determined during the assessment, in here you would put yes. If they were diverted out of coordinated entry or out of the system, you would stop the assessment. So we're moving on to the length of homelessness questions. These questions need to be answered accurately and thoroughly. Right here is this housing history tool. If it's not completed, the person will not be eligible for matching because this is how we're determining the length of time homeless and the length of time homeless has become the top priority for matching clients to housing. So we want you to document each of the client's locality overlapping with the past five year time frame, housed or unhoused. And then you wanna enter the actual start date for every location, even if the start date was eight years ago and the end date was four years ago. In other words, any time that overlapped with the past five year time frame. So we'll do an example. Add, so let's just say the person started living on the street in 2013 and they started 7-1-2013 and then they stopped living on the street 7-1-2019 and the type of place was a place unfit for habitation. They were living under a viaduct. So what we're gonna do is save and add another. I like to check and check what my end date was so that I can remember because that's gonna be the start date for the next one. So what we do is we save and add another. And then the start date was 7-1-2019. But this is the current situation, so we're gonna leave this blank. And the type of place is an emergency shelter or safe haven project. And we'll go ahead and say they're at PGM. And then we're gonna save. Now we've got our housing history right here. A lot of times there's gonna be many, many more instances than just two, but we need you to be as accurate as possible and as detailed as possible, especially when it comes to type of place, because we're trying to figure out how long this person has been homeless. So the current resident living situation, as I said, they were in a homeless shelter. So we're gonna say emergency shelter, including hotel or motel. Now we wanna determine is this person sheltered? These are these unsheltered questions, which is an, also a priority. We wanna prioritize people who are unsheltered. Yes, right now this is the place they typically sleep. They've been there about a month, so we're okay saying yes. And then if yes, and selected a situation that falls under place not meant for habitation, well, that's not us because we chose emergency shelter, so we're gonna move on. And then we can provide information if necessary, but we've already put here that they're at PGM. So this is plenty of information, they're at another shelter. And then length of stay in previous place just means PGM. How long were they in PGM? It's about a month. So we're gonna say a month. And then approximate date homelessness started, well, as far back as we can tell, it's 7-1-2013 it's for this person. Because we're just gonna include all of the instances of homelessness, whether they were on the street in a shelter and put those all in the same instance of homelessness. And then regardless of where they stayed last night, number of times the client has been on the street in emergency shelter or safe haven in the past three years, including today, we're gonna say one time. Total number of months homeless on the street in emergency shelter or safe haven in the past three years is more than 12 months. Okay. 
please complete the income information, the AMI information, criminal justice involvement, housing details, we want to know what the client choice is, and then any documentation we might have which you can upload in the separate section in the client profile. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way back up. And I sometimes like to save and then go back up, but actually if you just click this, it's gonna save all of that information. And yes, we want this information to be completed. You would go back and do that if you hadn't, but for now, we're just gonna click no. It's saving all that information. We're going to the vulnerability and disability, uh, vulnerability index and disability tab. And we're going to fill out all of this information. We need to know if the client has a disabling condition. And that is described here if you hover over with a description. So we need all of this information completed thoroughly. This person, this client is a family because it's a female with a child. So we're going to add the vulnerability index for a family. These are very detailed questions with a lot of information. They're very sensitive. I'm going to have you go through these and read them in detail and please answer them thoroughly. In case the person may have a disability that they're not revealing, you might want to answer these questions as well. And we can do an observational assessment. So because I exited out without any information, this didn't show up, but here you would have a list of the assessment or the screening tool that you completed. So from there, you're going to save and exit. Now you've got this listed under their entry exits. Let's just pretend they came back maybe the same day and had some new information. You're going to add an interim update, add an interim review, select update and then save and continue and then you can add any of the new information you've got here um, let's just say the person had a baby now you're going to change it to three and so you've got one and then you've got two and then for the second child the child is still age zero and it's a little girl so now If you exit out of there and you go back in, you're going to be able to see an entire history of that client information all there. So you've got the first question I had said two, and now I changed it to three. All of that information is going to be there. And again, that's why we don't, we don't want you to be afraid to overwrite old assessor's information because all that information is going to stay there. So you know how to do an interim review. You're not going to exit people out of CES. That All Chicago takes care of that. I take care of that. What we're going to do is because this client chose B, we're going to lock their record and get rid of the global. And then sometimes it'll say restricted. You're going to contact us if you need us to do the locking. But because you created this under the Skilled Assessor project, anybody who's a Skilled Assessor and has access to that project will be able to enter this client record. And then if they get matched to housing, we open up this record to the specific providers. Great. So. At this point, if they're only entered into the Skilled Assessor project and they're not in any other projects, the client needs to have an update every 30 days. Otherwise, they will not end up on the one list and they won't be eligible for housing. So as an assessor, you want to make sure to update your client's assessments. It doesn't have to be a lot. Anytime you change information or need to add new information, just go into this interim. Don't go through this entry. The other thing is, this housing history tool needs to be accurate. So I've outlined some of the common mistakes. You wanna make sure the exit date of the current situation is empty. You wanna make sure the notes don't contradict the type of place. The end date of one situation is equal to the start date of the next situation. 
We want five years documented and don't future date things. In order to add a new housing situation, you need to do an interim update. Sometimes what happens is assessors do not go into EDA mode and they create an assessment and a record. And then all of that housing history will be lost to any future assessor that goes and they won't be able to see that information. They won't be able to see any information, but it's, it's more difficult to, to redo the housing history update. And so that is it. You uh, are ready to go. You've got plenty of information at your fingertips, the skilled assessor workflow, as well as the checklist. And then you should provide the client with a, your information and um, a consumer handout with their HMIS ID and your contact information with the brochure. And you're all set. Thank you.